might see Kazakhstan as an autocracy, but Kazakh president Nursultan Nazarbayev does not. He says it's just a democracy that has elected the same president for almost three decades. In this time, the president and his country have been made very rich by huge oil, gas, and coal reserves. Wealth he used to build a gleaming new capital, Astana. But despite all those fossil resources, in 2016, Nazarbayev committed the country to phasing out oil and coal in favor of renewable energy. Last year, the state spent around $5 billion on a vast expo center to host an international forum on future energy. Nazarbayev sees Kazakhstan as a green superpower of the future. Two years ago, in France, was a conference between the United Nations countries. And the big reason of this conference was the global warming. Many countries signed the Paris Agreement, also Kazakhstan. In Paris, Nazarbayev committed Kazakhstan to using 50% renewable energy by 2050. Our Earth, it's only one planet where we can live. And of course, we should protect uh, our planet. And now you can just enjoy this beautiful show. Kazakhstan is as rich in renewable energy as it is in fossil fuels. With more than 300 sunny days a year, the country could easily power itself on solar energy alone. These green resources are attracting foreign investment. The largest solar power plant in Central Asia recently opened in the country's south, funded by the European Development Bank. A state-of-the-art solar panel factory on the outskirts of Astana was also built with private money. Здесь наши ребята после рабочего дня могут спокойно отдохнуть, физическое развитие. Он первый в Казахстане. Он сейчас и единственный в Казахстане. There are a few snags in the country's green ambitions. Neighboring China's effective domination of the solar panel market means this is likely to remain Kazakhstan's only solar panel factory. And so far, the country's green technology revolution hasn't spread far beyond the capital. Kazakhstan is roughly the size of Western Europe. It's huge, and the Aral Sea is one of its most remote regions. Tastebek is a fishing village that used to sit on the Aral Sea shore. But over-irrigation in the Soviet era reduced the sea by an area roughly the size of Ireland. So the village is now a 20-minute drive from the water 
and the seabed is grazing land for horses and camels. The sea's disappearance is considered one of the world's worst environmental disasters. Kirdabai Abragimov watched it happen. In the 80s, the World Bank invested millions of dollars in a dam project to revive the Aral Sea. Fish stocks quadrupled, and many of the families that had left returned. Kirdabai's son, Omiseric, is one of the new generation of Tastabek fishermen. Kirdabai has never been to the capital, Astana, and he says no one from the government has ever been out to Tastabek. Rather than solar energy or wind farms, he's more concerned that no one is paying attention to the water level in the Aral Sea, which he says is dropping again. Astana'dan da parlamentin çıkan. Haydi mi? Haydi mi? Yağın haydi'den koyat. Boldu.
Su dengen bırtalay tüsüp kettin. Bir metre 74 santimetre dengen tüsüp kettin. Kaytı batır deyiniz. Adamı da uğrat, malı da uğrat. Ava, dırıs tırmaydı, tuzu şart. Benim şaşım ne kadar bir şey? Bu sonunda da hep bak şaşır. Bunların şaşır ne kadar bir şey? Şu ekologi yönü böyle sorun musun? Karabuz. Başlar kaç, yağım size kalıp kalın. Bir şey şişesi sükeyim başlar mısın? Bu tırk koydu kutu koymayın. Atı sasın beni gelip şişesi sükeyim. Bu tırk koydu kutu koymayın. Atı atın olsa mendiler köp mü? In such a huge country where seas are disappearing and people don't yet have roads or running water, the president's green ambitions might seem a bit previous, particularly when his government is relying on private investment to fund this green revolution. It's pretty unbelievable to think that 20 years ago none of this existed. Yeah, no, no, no. The step was here. The yellow, two yellow building and Near is a governmental complex. Wow. Есть несколько причин, почему мы начали двигаться в сторону развития зеленой экономики. Во-первых, это, конечно, политическая стабильность и мудрое руководство в нашей стране. But there's no part of the state budget that invests in it. Would that not help? It's not, not, not like Germany, no. We, we, change, we have another model, yeah. Of course, major challenges like the restructuring of a national economy can be more easily overcome when there's little threat of political opposition. Все нефтяные компании осознают, что приходит новая эра. Это основной вызов для нашей страны. Этот процесс драматически будет продолжаться, и это все начинает работать на благо народа Казахстана.